Welcome back to another edition of In the Hot Seat here on the Podium Finish and the Podium Finish Live. Rob Tiongson here with Sam Mayer, driver of the number one Accelerate Pro Talent Chevrolet Camaro and the most recent winner in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. In fact, he has been on a hot streak, if you will, because he earned his two most recent career victories at Road America and Watkins Glen. So we sure ought to get these drivers in the hot seat, if you will. So Sam, before we get started, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing really good right now. Obviously, coming off of a win here this last weekend feels really, really good. But uh, like you said, the hot streak that we are on the last couple of months is, has been really fun to – has been a really fun journey. Uh, I'm really looking forward to what we can do the rest of the season going into the playoffs because we have so much momentum right now. It feels like we're indestructible right now. It feels really good. And there's nothing like confidence and having a bit of momentum on your side. Uh, good people also and good cars, but when you have a bit of those um, those unseen intangibles, man, life is good. So uh, I'm sure you're, you're like, let's pinch myself, just make sure that life is really happening as it is. <laughs> but uh, man, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And I'm sure you like this moment in my background. I know you folks listening to the show can't see it, but uh, it's a background of Sam's car uh, during last Saturday's race at Watkins Glen. So a good moment for the number one car. But anyways, let's actually talk about your season and you got to get into it a little bit. But uh, I would say it's been a sparkling year for you so far. Like I said, you got those wins at Road America and Watkins Glen. What has it been like for you to realize and experience these jubilant moments in your career so far? Yeah, it's been it's been a tough journey. A lot of learning, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of disappointment has led up to this just joy that I'm feeling now to have the success and have the streak that we are on. Uh, last year, we had a lot of success with top fives, top tens and close finishes and all that, but we never closed the deal out. And it wasn't a lack of speed and effort. It was just the fact that we were just so close and couldn't do it. This year, finally opening up the floodgates, getting that first win. Uh, it feels like I'm unstoppable right now. We already got our second win of the year, and we have so much momentum going into the playoffs that I'm really looking forward to getting it going because I know we, that we're a little bit behind in the bonus point part, but I think that we have such m good amount of momentum going into the playoffs that I think we're going to gain those points really quickly. Certainly, and I'm, I am sure you're looking forward to those the round of 12, 12 coming up, knowing those are the good tracks for you. And of course, the Charlotte Robles around the corner. So you're probably looking at your chops when we get to the road courses. But anywhere right now, my friend, you are super fast and so competitive. So that's going to be a lot of fun for junior motorsports fans to see that for sure. And let's talk about that aspect of your career. I mean, it's your second full time season with this re uh, renowned organization. You know, how would you present? perceive your evolution as a driver uh, in your second full-time season? Yeah, it's been a lot of learning. Like I said, there's been a lot of disappointment, downs and ups along the way to get to this point. And the organization Junior Motorsports is super, is super exciting to be a part of because of the name, obviously. And the people in the building are, are just amazing. And they've been so good to me. They've stuck by my side, obviously, through all the craziness that's happened over the last couple of years to to finally get this point and play play almost like the long game with me and and stick with me and give me the opportunity to get here um it's it's super special and to get the organization two more wins on the year we are a little bit behind compared to last year cuz we lacked some speed earlier in the spring but we have so much speed now that I think we can catch up and and get so many wins here closing off the year absolutely i mean i bet you right now as you're sitting here with me you're like man if i'm in my car at daytona i'm pretty sure I'm going to win that race as well. So I can just see the confidence exuding from you. It's uh, it's really cool to see and really authentic. Um, and we'll talk about playoffs here in just a moment. I know you talked about the struggles a little bit. And when we last met back in 2021, I know that was just when you were kind of getting into the, the seat of the junior motorsports car because you just turned, I think, 18 at the point at that point. So you could race at a lot of these major tracks. I mean, how have you managed or responded to any criticisms levied by the fans or media pundits or even internally when it comes to you as a driver? Yeah, like I said, with this appointment over the last couple of years of not getting those wins that we expect, uh, it takes a toll on you and obviously all the other outside voices that you can hear and see. 
uh, it takes a toll on you too. And doubts I'd say here and there, but you have good runs here and there, and then it all goes away. Um, <laughs> obviously having winning now uh, takes a lot of weight off the shoulders and you feel just super good about yourself and the team. Um, but yeah, I just like, you got to block all that out now because you know, you can do it. You've accomplished already what you wanted as your first goal. The rest of the goals, you got to go out and get them because they're, they're right there waiting for you to come. I like that. And I feel like people out there who may struggle with that and sometimes feel like their backs are against the wall. I think they're going to take some inspiration from what you said there, Sam. So that's really good uh, advice and also uh, a healthy attitude for sure. In fact, I might have needed to hear that myself. So I like <laughs> that. That was good to hear. Now let's talk about the playoffs because I know you're super excited. I'm excited as a journalist to get to that point of the year because that's when we get to the nitty gritty. And I believe for the another year in a row, we're going to start it off at Texas Motor Speedway, a track that you typically run pretty well at. I mean, what are some things that you have learned about from last year's run that you feel is going to benefit you this time around to have a really good concentrated run at this year's championship? Yeah, I think in general, we we have a lot of good racetracks coming up in general for for our team and our organization. We've had obviously wins at Darlington, wins at Daytona. We, we've won all of these racetracks coming up. We won at Kansas last year with Noah. Like all of these tracks that we have success at, we've run really good at um, the entire playoff grid. I mean, other than there's one or two that I don't know if I have confidence in, we just got to get there and find out. But other than those, I, I every single racetrack is something that I'm looking forward to going to and I go to with knowing that I can get a big points day, know I can get to the next round, just click off one win and you're in the championship four if you make it to the round of eight. So lots of positivity for us. We just got to go out there and do it. Certainly. And let's actually talk about one of those aspects that have probably catalyzed your efforts recently. I mean, it's your first year working with crew chief Marty Lindley, who's been around in this sport for a very long time. But uh, what has that process been like working with him in terms of gelling with him and how he's likely elevated your craft as a driver. Yeah, working with Marty back in 2018, 2019, and 2020 uh, in the ARCA and the k and series back in the day. I mean, it, it feels super good to be able to come back with him and have success already. Uh, obviously, it's the first year back with him since we've been together years and years ago. But um, to have success with him already, for him to get in the game and get in the groove really quickly with these Xfinity cars, he's learning just as much as I am on the weekly. So... Uh, to have success, have wins, have good race cars uh, in general just feels really good. And it, it, it's great having Marty back. I like that, you know, when you have a sense of familiarity, a familiar voice, someone that you can bounce ideas off of, it's just, it's almost like you can complete each other's sentences. It's almost like exactly. a match game, if you will. So definitely, that's... 100%. <laughs> we should do a driver crew chief interview one of these days just to see if you guys really think of the same word at the same time. <laughs> huh? That'd be pretty neat. Now, I understand here, Sam, that you work with a really great organization called N Stigma. So, you I mean, how important is it for you to collaborate with them in terms of mental health awareness and just in general having those difficult conversations about it? Yeah, you know, like we, we haven't talked too much about it lately, um, but, you know, like working with them a lot, especially in the past, especially over COVID. Um, it, it affected a lot of people and in a lot of different ways too. So to be able to, to help out organizations like that is super special and to help people in general, because uh, that's the goal of any organization like that is to help people. And, and to be a part of that is just really satisfying. And I think that's really uh, a great thing that you're doing just because yeah, COVID there certainly impacted us. I think even post COVID it's tough because people probably got used to a routine or developed some kind of defense against being isolated and then being reintegrated with society can be a little tough, but I think it's great that people like you are, are working on that uh, with that organization and just others in general realizing it's okay to have those talks because I don't know if we would have before COVID. So it's uh, that's really neat that you're doing that uh, over the years. Now, let's talk a little bit about the team ownership side with Dale and Kelly, Ironheart, Miller. Um, what's the best advice that you receive from both of them in terms about handling the rigors of racing? Yeah, you know, there's <laughs> there's so much, there's so many different aspects to racing. There's there's the personal side, the business side, the driver side. There, there's 
so many different antics that go along with racing that Kelly and Dale both have so much knowledge with, and I really can't pinpoint one thing that they help me with because it, it, it just flows into everything else that we can talk about. Uh, but Kelly's talked to me a lot about the business side because she obviously is the boss over there. She knows what's going on. Uh, she gets it. She gets being a driver as well. So, and that's something that Dale's helped me with too, is, is a lot of the driver side, getting, getting used to being in the spotlight and showing what you got. You have to do it right. Otherwise you won't make it. So he, he knows all about that. He, he knows how to make driving, driving more fun and, and less business uh, because obviously an organization like junior motorsports is, it's just tons of fun over there. So having those two as boss, uh, it feels really good. It's a great balance from the sounds of things, just because like you said, Kelly's got that great business background. Certainly it doesn't help. It uh, doesn't hurt to work with Earnhardt in general, just because, they have always been so innovative with business, with merchandising and just, you know, dealing with the press as well. So you've got two great uh, subject matter experts with that. So um, it's almost like going to college, but better than that. You're doing it for fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, most folks may never understand and experience the speed and rush that you feel in that race car every weekend. But what are a few relatable experiences that someone like me probably has done in their life? would be similar to what you do in your car. I think the the biggest comparison that I can make for someone, anyone, uh, would be to compare Dover or really kind of any mile and a half like that. Like, I think you can kind of throw, you can throw Texas into that mix too, is is being on a roller coaster that, that goes straight down. That light feeling that you feel going off into the corner is the exact same that you feel going down on a roller coaster it's it's really it's it's hard to explain but if you feel that feeling in your stomach you can you can almost directly correlate that to racing it's really cool now that you said that now i'm trying to see, remember that feeling so that's i'm not going to see things the same way anymore the way you said that so that's really cool i, I have ridden roller coasters i've actually been in the front of a roller coaster before which is uh yeah i can't do that anymore i'm retired <laughs> from excitement <laughs> But that's a cool comparison. I think folks are going to understand that. Now, let's just say that you have a bunch of money laying around and you're like, you know what? I want to build a racetrack somewhere. What kind of racetrack would you build and where would it be? I would build, I think I would try to, I would try to build a mile and a half because there's a lot of really good mile and a half out there, but there's also mile and a half that struggle. So I would try to build a type of mile and a half racetrack, intermediate racetrack that has like progressive type banking, almost kind of like Homestead, um, but shaped differently than Homestead. But I think having a racetrack like that, that could provide different grooves for racing. Like as a driver, you can kind of design your own racetrack based off of what you like. And that's something that I like. So uh, I would do something cl close to that. And where would this be? Man, I think I would put it, I would put it towards the Northwest. I think having the weather up there um and the cool backgrounds i think would be really cool somewhere somewhere close to the mountains kind of like fontana like the the fontana views that you can see there and some of the pictures that you see on those race of those racetracks are just beautiful so i would i would build something close to fontana um in that in that sense of what you see and kind of like the racing you get to yeah, I'm I'm going to miss the fact that we're not racing in fontana for the interim and i know what you're talking about with mount baldy in the background uh we got some amazing shots of that racetrack uh, from other outlets in mine as well. So, yeah, now I'm starting to think about cold weather because you don't want to hear the weather here in Texas. It's pretty bad temperature wise. Yeah. It's, so. it's 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 hot all around the southeast too. Here it, it was like 95 today so far. So, I'm uh, I'm happily inside doing this interview with you. And same here. I'm not actually in Watkins Glen. I wish that were. It's probably cooler <laughs> for both of us than than where we're at. Man, I'm enjoying this so much, but I got to get to my last question because I know we're both busy, busy dudes over here. But uh, if you got to be a guest DJ for Sirius XM Radio, what music or songs would you be playing in terms of artists? I would play like my favorite artist right now would be Pitbull. Uh, he he has a lot of really fun songs I like, and it's really like it's songs that you could really DJ with. And, and I think like the, the, the vibe that you can get from stuff like that would be a lot of fun. So that, that would definitely be something I would do. 
I like that. It's a nice little like Friday afternoon feeling, if you will. When you exactly. You get it. <laughs> I do because I am I am a nine to five or East Coast time person. So yes, I look forward <laughs> to Fridays after five o'clock. But man, I am I'm in, I'm glad that we got to do this at last. At least you did this interview with me, not Nathan. No, <laughs> no offense to Nathan. No kidding. You're good. He's a good dude. But uh, do you have anything you want to say to the fans before we wrap things up? Yeah, just thanks to everyone who uh, supports racing because really we would not be able to do this without the people in the grandstands and people that watch our TV and and participate and watching in these uh, these podcasts. So. It's super cool to have people uh, that support us as race car drivers, uh, us as a sport, uh, because we would not be able to do it without you guys. So thank you.